320 pound load of lumber is lifted using this triple sling. At the instant shown the lumber's at rest, I want to find out what the tension is in each leg of the sling. The first thing I have to do is always draw a free body diagram. The first thing I have to dis decide in drawing a free body diagram is what I'm drawing it of. In this case, as I want to treat this lumber, all of this lumber as a particle, I can think of the point A as the one spot in space where everything is actually happening. Out of A, I clearly have the tension in the leg AB, and I have the tension in the leg AC, and I have the tension in the leg AD. I don't know what those directions are, but I know that they go from A to B, from A to C, and from A to D. Now, I also have the tension in the rope that's coming up from that, and because this whole lumber is held up somehow from this top piece. If I thought about the whole thing as a as a single weight, I can say that the the tension in this top string coming down to the whole ensemble has to be the 320 pounds. Now I want to put each of these things in Cartesian form. To do that I'm going to use a position vector, a unit vector, and a multiply because I'm going along a line that has two points on it. I have A and B a is going to be the Cartesian point 6.581, B is the Cartesian point 003, C is the Cartesian point 7.505. Now these are points in space. These aren't vectors yet. These are just points. D is going to be 7.2500. You should make sure that you know how to find those spaces, those points, based on where the dot how the diagrams are labeled. That's not always trivial and it is something you need to be able to do. Once you've got the points, the position vector is just 2 minus from. So to go AB, I'm going to take the position, the point B and subtract the point A. So I'll have minus 6.5i minus 8j plus 2k. The position vector for A to C is C minus A is i, just one i, minus 8j plus 4k. And the position vector from a to d is going to be 1.75i minus 8j minus k. To change each of these position vectors into unit vectors, I need to multiply, uh, divide by the magnitude of each of them. You find the magnitude by taking the square root of each of the components squared. So the square root of 6.5 squared plus 8 squared plus 2 squared is 10.5. The square root of 1 squared plus 8 squared plus 4 squared is 9. And the square root of 1.75 squared plus 8 squared plus 1 squared is 8.25. Now I can write each of my forms, my forces, in their Cartesian forms. I've got the tension in the top chord is going to be 320 pounds in the positive J direction. The tension in AB, if you take these numbers and divide it by that magnitude, multiply by the magnitude of the force itself, you get, and I just divided these out on a calculator, minus 0.61905i minus 0.76190j plus 0.190476k. That's AB. AC, the vector, is Again, you have to multiply by the magnitude, TAC, the tension in that, or a, the magnitude of AC, however you want to define your variables. This is positive 0.11111i minus 0.88889j plus 0.4444k. The third one, again, you've got the magnitude of the vector itself times the unit vector, 0.21212i minus 0.96970j minus 0.121212, etc. Okay. I got these by taking these position vectors right here and dividing each of them by its magnitude so that I have a unit vector and then multiplying by the magnitudes of each of the forces themselves. Now, to find the equilibrium, I want to add up the i's, add up the j's, and add up the k's. So, the i's will be, and I'm just going to drop the magnitudes 
markings and just say T-A-B. Pardon me there for a second, I had to change the ink on my pen. 61905 T-A-B minus the I component for the next one, plus point one 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 T-A-C, plus point two one two one two T-A-D, and the tension in the top cable doesn't have an I part, so that's equal to zero. The J's, 0 0.76190 TAB, minus 0 0.88889 TAC, minus 0 0.96970 TAD. And this one does have a J component. Don't forget your tension. Plus 320 equals zero. This is a good spot to stop and check. You've got a negative sign for each of your J components for the tensions in the bottom cords and a positive J component for the top cord. That makes good sense because if it were all negative, everything would be pulling down and that wouldn't make any sense. So your third one is 0 0.190476 TAB plus 0.44444 TAC minus 0.121212 TAD. I should always use five significant digits, so I'm going to go back and put that one in. And this one also doesn't have a K component from the top cord, so that's equal to zero. The easiest way to do this is to actually put it all in a matrix and type it into Mat MATLAB or Maple or your calculator. If you think about how these all work, you can, at this point, copy down the rows into your matrix. I'm just defined, writing it down again so you can see how it all works. If you wanted to think about this, this would be, the top line would read points, negative 0.619 TAB plus 0.111 TAC plus 0.212 TAD, which is exactly what you had before. The constant has to go on the other side of the equation, so this would be 0 minus 320, 0. If you define this as A times your, your vectors of unknowns equals your vectors of constants, you can type that into a computer program and say that the constants, that the vector that you're looking for has to be equal to the inverse of A times your constant vector. I'm going to write that over again. A inverse times your constants. Once you do that, the computer will spit it out for you and you get the tension in AB is 86.2 pounds. The tension in AC is 27.7 pounds and the tension in AD is 237.